Introducing, I have just dun, received dun, dun. the brand new Framework Chromebook Edition laptop. It's in the box. I haven't opened it yet. So I'm going to do an unboxing right here on the show right now. And you're going to get our hot takes from me and Steve of what this thing's got, what it can do. Uh, this is an all cardboard box. Even the inside of it as I'm opening it. Look at this. Look at this. It's all cardboard. Steve's cracking right. up over there. I mean, yeah. I mean, what else would it be? I don't know. What else would I expect well, from it's, a box? It's, I mean, Apple, you open one of their boxes, and it's all beautiful, white, pristine design. I mean, it's still cardboard, but okay. it's not, it's not uh, uh, you know, recycled cardboard like this looks got like. It. But it's even, even the packaging inside. All right, so inside the box, you've got the power adapter. Duh. You've got the Chromebook. Duh. Which is here. But you also have something over here, which is very, very interesting. One of the great things about the framework Chromebook laptop and the regular framework framework Windows laptop is the fact that it is designed to be, as I mentioned on a couple of shows here, basically completely customizable and repairable. Every single part inside has its own individual barcode, QR code. You can buy them all individually and even basically build them yourself if you want to buy all the individual parts off the website. And it is basically, they set out to say, all right, repairing laptops suck. The experience is just terrible. Excuse me. So let's design a laptop that can be completely and totally repaired. It actually, I believe, got a 10 out of 10 or 100% on the iFixit breakdown score, which has never, ever been done before. So really, really phenomenal job. Well done. Um, but one of the cool things about it is that they have interchangeable modules. So you can choose when you're ordering what ports you want to have on the laptop. So I chose, for example, and my, my focus is locked back here, so I can't zoom in on these and show you, but I'll have to film some B-roll and put it over here next to us on the, uh, on the screen. But I chose Ethernet, obviously, because I like having Ethernet ports, uh, an HDMI port, USB-A, and two USB-Cs. Now, there are only four, four ports that you can put these in, and these are little modular pieces that slot directly into the frame of the laptop itself. And the reason why I bought more than four is because, quite frankly, they're easily interchangeable. You can just pop them off and put on the one that you want. This is a USB-C connector on the end here. And there's a little button that pops it off. You can see how tiny this is. And this is the USB-C port. But if I go and I open the Ethernet one, which it, it looks a little bit beefier, pops out. Ooh, transparent. we got to bring the age of transparent electronics back. That's... I missed that. But anyway, this is an Ethernet port, and it's a USB-C connector here, and it just slots directly into the laptop. Looks like it might stick out a little bit on the bottom here. Slots directly into the laptop, and then you have an, an Ethernet port. And so basically, you choose when you're checking out what ports you want to have on here. And I'm not going to say it's the death of dongles or the end of dongles, but it's still pretty cool that you can kind of on the fly say, oh, I need my HDMI port. Here, let me pop it in and lose one of the USB-C ports. You do need to have at least one because, like every other Chromebook in the world, um, well, pretty much every other Chromebook in the world, they charge via USB-C. So you need to have that one there. Uh, the power adapter is uh, your pretty standard power adapter, so I'm going to put that aside just for a second here. Um, well, you know what? I can open it up real quick and show it off. Let's see what's in here. I think that it's going to be pretty straightforward, though. Uh, for those wondering, this is running inside, not the power adapter, but, oh, it's tiny. I take it back. There's nothing standard about this. It's itty-bitty. It's USB-C on one side and Mickey Mouse on the other side. You get this, you get that, and uh, all the pieces come apart, which is always appreciated. Again, because you can replace each one of these individually instead of having to replace the entire uh, brick. So that's really awesome. Uh, the specs inside... Oh, almost spilled my drink. Specs inside are a 12th Gen Intel Core i5 processor. It is specifically the 1240p model running up to 4.4 gigahertz. It's got a 206, sorry, 256 gig um, SSD inside of it. And I believe there is a module that can increase that, but I did not get it. And it has 8 gig of DDR4 RAM. And here's the laptop. It looks like a Mac and a Chrome CR48 had a baby. Very nice, beautiful all around, has a good feel. Um, I'm told it has a one-hand lift, which I'll try in a second, but I want to highlight these slots are where the little module pieces go. So this literally just slides right in there. Click. It's in. Done. Now it's in there. Then there's a little button here that I can push, and I can just... Okay, it's a little hard. That's a good thing. It should be hard. Maybe I had to push it harder. There we go. Got it out. 
Essentially, this is the laptop. Inside the box, it also comes with a handy-dandy framework screwdriver because everything is meant to be taken apart. And, ooh, stickers. We love stickers. So lots of good stickers. This is very much reminding me of the CR48 of the old days. These are definitely going on my production MacBook and I suppose on here as well. Um, it feels good. It's light. Oh, the hinges open very nicely. And you've got an all-metal frame. You've got a glass trackpad. Actually, uh, has it's not uh, haptic, so it does, does have some clickable here. The one thing it does not have, and this disappointed me, is a fingerprint, fingerprint reader. No biometric. And it actually looks like this right here should be a fingerprint sensor. And I'll try and get some B-roll of that as well so that you all uh, can see. It's just, it's just the power button. And I think that at some point in the future, they'll probably put in a module that you can take this thing apart because that's what it's meant to do. And, um, and you'll be able to uh, put one in. But even the bezel comes off, and you can change the color of the bezel with something else if you want. It's got physical um, power cutoff switches for both the microphone and the camera up top here. It's got the headphone jack on the side over here. And... Um, a uh, little charging light on this side as well. It's a 1080p, 60 frames per second webcam. The body is an aluminum body. It's 1.3 kilograms, and um, the keyboard is backlit. The price for this whole thing starts at $963, which is um, on the high end, honestly. But if you hold it up and compare it next to the Dragonfly, you can see that they are similar in build quality and, you know, feel in general metal feels good so i haven't actually turned it on i literally just opened it up now so that's basically just the unboxing my first impression here it feels amazing um what do you think steve you gotta turn it on i do have to turn it on Wait, i've got a i uh i do have a usb-c port but i need to plug in the usb-c widget which i took out um one thing to note, it is not a touchscreen. What OS are you running on this one? It's going to be Chrome OS. This is the Chrome OS laptop. What do you mean, what OS am I running? You mean which version? I don't know. I forgot which version. Or no, I forgot which uh, one you said. Uh, it's the Framework Chromebook Edition. Frame.work. Yeah. And uh, here you go. I plugged it in, and here's the screen. Woo! Hit the mic, sorry. Here's the screen. Already started up. So uh, it's it's a glossy screen. Uh, I will give it that. I'm going to not show the part where I put in my uh, my Wi-Fi information. Um, whoop, it just went dark. Why did it just go dark? The power button is lit up. Must not have let it charge enough before it all turned on. Could be. Or that's what happened with my Mac today. It took me about five minutes <laughs> for it to get enough battery to yeah. turn on. And here we go. It was just rebooted. All right, and there we go. It's checking for updates. Now, note, I don't have all the chips in. I just have one of them just so that I can power it. So, again, it can run with them. It can run without them. When you plug it in, it does recognize them. I'm not sure if it recognizes them on the fly, like if I were just to swap out while it was on uh, one of the USB-A, for example, and put on uh, the HDMI port, if it would pick that up right away. But we can definitely find uh, find that out. Keyboard feels good. It's uh, a little bit uh, squishy. Uh, not bad. Not quite a MacBook Pro keyboard or uh, or the the same as the Dragonfly. The Dragonfly has a little bit more give, like a little bit more uh, pushback on the keys, which is generally something that I like. Um, let me just put in my password here. I think they increased the price a little bit on the batch. Batch 2 here. Oh, did they? To 9 now. Interesting. Let me just yep. check the pre-order page. Interesting. Unless that's with, maybe they included the extra expansion card slots. Um, I don't I'm know. Not sure. It could be batch two has gone up by a little bit. Prices as initially configured. I think it may change depending on what cards you get as well. So, like for example, yeah. if you drop one of the USB Cs and you get a Display Port, it goes up a little bit. Um, oh, you can get an extra expansion card here of either 250 gig for $69 or one terabyte for $149, which is really not bad for an SSD. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the speeds are for those that are, as they're attached, but you can also get a micro SD card one uh, f uh, module reader for $19. The Ethernet yeah. one is $40. So all in all... Um, it's great to see something that you can, you know, play around with and, and put together and, and whatnot. Um, 
And if it breaks, literally everything on here is replaceable. The keyboard or the trackpad or even the screen, the bezel around the screen, the buttons, like everything. It's, it's unbelievable. So um, they didn't pay me for this. I just think that this is a fascinating approach to computers. I'd like to see more companies be a, enable us to uh, repair more of our laptops. I love the, the design elements of my MacBook Pro and my iPhone, but I also do realize that it would be great to be able to actually repair more things on here, um, especially you know at the rate that things break. But uh, you wanted to know which version of Chrome OS it ships with. I've got it up and running here, so I can tell you it's 106.0.5249.112. Uh, I will obviously put it into the beta channel and get it all up to date and everything. Um, but that's it. It's up and running, and uh, there's the screen. So I don't know if it's going to be able to see it a bit washed out there. I'll get uh, again. I'll get some B-roll. But honestly, trackpad feels great. Laptop feels great. It's pretty uh, pretty snappy. I mean, it better be. It's running an i5, right? Um, I obviously like to uh, immediately go and change the size of all of the items on the screen so that my resolution is uh, taking advantage of the, the whole screen there so you can see a little bit more. Let me get rid of that white settings screen and then you can see the beautiful background that they give you in there. So And it's washed out because that's just how my camera is set. My camera is pr primely tuned, tuned uh, to my face here and not to a screen. So I'll have to do some B-roll of that and throw it in there uh, when I edit this thing up in the morning. So if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. Be happy to answer them. Going to be continuing to test this and play around with it, and I'll put out a review video um, hopefully in the next uh, week or two. Uh, Steve, do you have any uh, questions, comments, thoughts about this awesome little widget? No, I'm just tempted, tempted to get one, actually. I haven't had a Chromebook <laughs> in a long time. Well, this is a, a pretty, pretty slick one. Um, yeah. In case you are part of the people that are wondering, the Ethernet port module does stick out. That's the Ooh. extra beefier. It sticks out a little bit there and it sticks up. It doesn't um, it does not go over the top of the bottom of the frame of the laptop. You can see there that's that's basically uh, maybe a teeny teeny tiny bit, but it's basically flush there. Um, but it uh, yeah, if you're going to have that in there all the time, it is not flush, but that's because the jack itself is thicker than the laptop, so that's not something that okay. is totally abnormal. But one of the great things about this is if they come out with a smaller module that takes advantage of maybe some of the foldable designs that we've seen out there from other manufacturers, and you want to switch to that in a year from now, you can. You just buy that module, swap this one out, swap that one in, and you're done. So anyway, I think that this is a super duper cool approach, and the logo is super cool. The whole the whole package, the whole everything about it is super duper cool, and um, I will definitely be using this on the regular and playing around with it. Um, it is not a touchscreen though, and there is no fingerprint reader, so they could have done a little bit better there. But it is uh, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, etc., um, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So pretty good stuff there. Anyway, I'll. Uh, this was a, our first official unboxing on the show. It was pretty, pretty interesting. So, um, you were going to say something, Steve? No, no. Okay. okay. Well, uh, that's all for this week. Send us your questions and comments on Twitter at Workspace Recap and on, on our website, WorkspaceRecap.com. Hit the, the subscribe button wherever you are listening to us and leave us a review if you would. Um, if you have questions or comments and you're over on the YouTube side, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Give us a thumbs up if you could. And uh, have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Workspace Recap. <laughs>